Hello, 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 and welcome in, everybody. It's time. So what do we call this? The Fall Series Summer Edition? Is that what we, is, is it? Pre- call it? I don't have to call it right? anything. Late Summer Series Edition. Show. Late Summer Series. Late Summer Series Edition of Three Guys Before the Game. And why not? We have an open week. And I've been chastised already this, uh, this day. It's not a bye week because we're not in a tournament, someone told me. Someone's it. And it's not an off week because that's an insult to all football coaches because they're still working. It's amazing last couple of years. People really get bummed out about oh, that terminology. They do. Big thing. You can't yeah. call it a bye week? No. So welcome Open. to the bye week. I've always called it a bye week. Yep, so yeah. 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 Always called it a bye week. Yeah. Welcome in, everybody. There's it's, no game. It's a super special edition, off week, bye week, whatever week you want to call it, of three guys before the game with our very special guest. Please welcome to the program. An historic figure in Mountaineer football history. I mean, he's going to be historic, right? He becomes the answer to a trivia question. Sure. Yes. Who's the first general manager in the history of West Virginia University football? It's our guy, Drew Fabianich, who joins us here in studio. There he is. Coming up on the program, three guys before the game, we're going to hit him with Mike Wallace like 60 minutes questions. <laughs> I don't guys know that's, that's not true. Better, I better get a chest protector. Right? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't already set off on a bad Trying to make them nervous. Yeah. Three guys brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center. They happen to be the only warranty forever dealer in the state of West Virginia. You can visit them at burdettcamping.com. What's that mean when you say warranty forever? What it means is this. Whatever you buy from them, the warranty lasts forever. As long as you own it, the warranty lasts forever, which we've consensus here is that's a really super good deal. Warranty lasts forever. You go, oh, something's gone here. Well, don't worry about it. The warranty lasts forever. Visit BurdettCamping.com. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. You name it from A to Z when it comes to your business, whether it's managing your IT, digital phone services, equipment, they got it. And great addition this fall, the Comax Blimp which was flying above the stadium during the recent West Virginia pit game. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Great time of the year to get that next piece of marine craft at the end of the season where you can get some fantastic deals. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com, the premier number one, single number one pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia. Three guys also brought to us by GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Get your rewards card. Save money on food, on fuel, and on Saturdays during the entire fall season, you get triple rewards points. And so we strongly encourage you to get to a GoMart on a Saturday and load up on the unbelievable supply of footlong fly, fly rod Slim Jim lengths. I mean, like whoosh, 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 Slim Jims, like a fly rod. And uh, the now the, the, the new edition, the nine and a half pound Reese cup, celebrating Halloween, pretty good deal. Give, really good, give or take a couple yeah. pounds. Three guys also brought to us by the Conley CPA Group, providing value beyond the numbers. We'll do some of those numbers coming up on this episode. We'll talk a little analytics. Please welcome to the program now formally, Drew Fabianich, General Manager of Mountaineer Football. Thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate well, pleasure it. Pleasure to be with y'all. No, you really mean that? Are you being serious, or is it really a truly a pleasure? No, I really. Or did don't. you wake up this morning and go like, "I got to go do that thing"? Yeah, I kind of woke up. And said, yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I promised fair I'd enough. do because it. I got to tell you, Saturday yeah, was, Saturday was rough. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Sunday morning was rough. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, yeah. How about the jump on the bus at Pittsburgh, drive all the way down to Bridgeport to get your car? Yeah, uh, that is true. The people you want to talk about whining and complaining. The people that were on this trip that park, they they think. They're going to, this was a great one. So everyone, when we leave for a trip, we leave from Bridgeport. So there's a bunch of buses. You can get on the bus at the push car center. They drive to Bridgeport. And then they, after the trip's home, you get back on the bus. and They drive you back to Morgantown. Okay, fine. But there's this, there's this click, a group of people that goes like, I'm smarter than everyone else. I'm going to drive my car to Bridgeport so that when we land on Saturday, Sunday morning, whatever it is, I'm going to get in my car in Bridgeport, and I'll get home quicker. Right. Well, that becomes a problem when the plane doesn't land back in Bridgeport as scheduled, and now those people that thought they were crafty by parking in Bridgeport, now they're in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and they go like, uh, so that's a problem. Problem. That's not you? No, I don't drive. I go, I'm a bus, bus guy, old school bus guy. 
No, won't do the bus. Yeah, old school. I, bus I, I travel. I traveled for years, and just like I will never check a bag because you know? that saves me about forty five minutes. See, man, well, no, that's, you know? I understand. I mean, yeah, trust me. I, I said, what should I do? Everybody goes, oh, you should drive down there. I said, why? I said, well, because you don't have to wait on the bus to get loaded and unloaded, which make make a heck of a lot of sense to me. Sure. And you land it. Supposedly, we're supposed to land at what three forty five. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that didn't happen. No, nah, it didn't happen. You know, so well, good. I'm glad Drew and all the newbies got to experience the Pittsburgh well, to Morgantown, like like the old school we used to have to do. That's, so what, I, I, that's what I told the guys. Good I said, learning experience. I told the people on the on the flight. We were flying home. I said, hey, everyone's sitting around here going, hey, we're winning old school Don Neal and football. <laughs> yeah, there you go, yeah. Now you're going <laughs> yes. to travel like Don Neal and Dave. You're, go, you're going to Pittsburgh. Fair enough. So yeah. anyway, I didn't mind it, really. I mean, other than the extra hour and a half it took so like no one cares about anything when you win right that's like right. if they would have got on a plane right. and said uh ladies and gentlemen we've got a problem we're gonna have to go to boise idaho and pick up a piece of equipment everyone go like all right cool yeah we're good go ahead and get it dub's a dub let's go okay. but if you lose it's kind of like everything becomes you know multiplied yeah. eh, that's what it is anyway so that's why that's why my attitude was like that no we're fine no we're, we're, we're good to have you so this is this is a we've always talked and we've seen this coming that college sports is becoming more and more like professional sports. Yeah. And you bring this vast background from being on both sides of this. You've been in the college game, you've been in the professional game for a long, long time. And so you come here and you fill a role that perhaps in the past wasn't, you know, as needed, but now we're dealing with transfer portal. We're dealing with roster management like we've never seen before. So you need to evaluate not only the kids that potentially could be high school seniors, but you need to evaluate kids in the portal and then figure out, okay, how are we managing this roster? Because there could be this massive unexpected change in, in roster management. So with all that being said as the precursor, define what you think the role is nowadays for a college football GM? I don't think it's any different than what a pro general manager is. I mean, seriously. I mean, the transfer portal is pro free agency without contracts, which really is restrictive to you as, as college football you know, evaluators, because at least in the NFL, you had restricted and unrestricted free agents. So you knew exactly who was in and who was out. This, you have no earthly idea. It could be 1,500 that come out in December. It could be 2,600 that come out. And it just keeps going up every single year. Right. So you have to be ahead of it. And, you know, you're not supposed to be evaluating. But, you know, you have to because if you don't, you have a three- or four-day window. And how are college programs going to evaluate that amount of players in that amount of time? Because – most of these deals happen within three days of the date. Right. They really do. Wow. And if they don't, then there's usually something wrong with the young man. There's usually an issue. There's usually something that they're waiting on. It's a transcript issue. It's something else. So, you know, to say that it's – I manage everything but the coaching. Right. As far as the recruiting goes. Whether it's high school, whether it's transfer portal, whether it's, you know, the kids on campus – and put it this way, you can decide how you want to handle this. You can handle it like Dion did. You can handle it like Texas State has. You can handle it, you know, like other people have tried to handle it. But you have to decide what you are and how you're going to develop your, your players. Because sometimes when you develop a player, that player is going to leave, you know, because the money's <laughs> different all across the country. And you have to show them why it's valuable for them to stick around. And hopefully I can help with that because I came here for the kids because I want to prepare them to be the best possible player they can be to give them an advantage because all of them think they're going to play in the NFL. Not all of them are. I mean, let's be real. 1.5% make it every single year. So, you know, I just hope to increase that percentage here. That's what I try to, that's what I'm going to try to do. There's so a lot of other things that go into it. So, so what is, uh, if you've worked it out, what is your relationship specifically with, with the coaches? Is, does Neil Brown or the OC of the D.C. come to you and say, I need a corner, and you start looking for a corner, then you come back to the coach and say, I got three possible corners here that I've evaluated. What do you like? I mean, how is this process going to work? Well, the process started with me actually evaluating the entire roster, and I actually told them what they needed. Okay. And they put it this way. 
Coach Brown, the staff, they really truly do. They're very aware of what they need and what they're lacking. They do. Um, but it's my job to say, okay, well, we may need three of three corners instead of two. You know, we may need, you know, two offensive linemen instead of four, you know, in high school. And then I might say, well, we need, you know, two older guys out of the transfer portal and we have to be ready to have a ready board just like we did in the NFL of those guys stacked. Who's the best? Who's the first, the second, and the third guy? We got to be ready to go. And so then is yes, that, I'm sorry, then is that your decision as to who you you get or is that coach's decision? That's put it this way. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the board set the way I think. And then we have to make a decision together. Because the thing that I learned, that thing, but the the issue that happens in the NFL, it's well, personnel doesn't know what they're doing. Oh, coaching doesn't know what they're doing as far as evaluating players, right? And it was always like if you brought a player in that the coaches didn't want, they would never coach them. We called them toe tag guys because they arrived and they were already on the table in the morgue with a toe tag on. And the coaches weren't going to coach them because they truly didn't want them. Well, that's what I want to bring to this. I want to say, I like them. Our department likes them. I want you to like them. I want you to want them. Okay. Because if you don't want them, I don't want to bring them here because I want them to want to coach them because you'd be surprised that when a coach is really, really motivated to coach a kid, he develops a hell of a lot faster. So that's, it's going to be a we type of thing. I'm not going to override Neil. I'm not. I mean, it's his football team, but I'm going to put everything in front of him to make this a very educated decision. And I hope that he trusts my opinion, you know, because I do know what a football player looks like. I mean, after 18 years of just evaluating him and coaching for 17 years before that, I think I know what I'm looking at. So I don't know if I answered your question. You, you did absolutely. Now, I got to follow up, but we'll get to that oh, later. Okay. Go, no, 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 no. Hey, it's, hey listen, ahead. hey, listen. This is, <laughs> is, is this free? <laughs> this is free for him. It's, yeah, it's not. All right, no, because well, you said you said I know what a football player looks like. Do you ever see Moneyball? Yeah. Do you really want me to get into this? Okay. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Okay. This could be, this could but, be uh, the comedy let me, group. Let me, okay. do the, let me do the question to you. Okay. okay, go ahead. All right. And when Billy Bean says to the scout, you sit there and you talk to a kid, and you say you know what he's going to be, and you know what his potential is, and you don't. And so it was a diminishing of the role of scouts and more of uh, looking at analytics. So with all due respect, mm -hmm. how do you know? <laughs> um. Because truly, the NFL Combine has been analytics for years. Now, I mean, all you're doing is tracking traits. That's all that was going on. And everybody says, well, you know, we're bringing in analytics. No, you're not. It's already been there. All you have to do is understand how to use it. And, I mean, I'm going to use every access. I mean, from tracking football, there's a website tracking football. I'm going to use every, every tool that we can use to narrow the field down. Because there's also some ways that we can actually query players in and out. If I don't want a 5'10 corner, we're going to pull those guys out of there, right? I want somebody that's 5'10 or above. You know, I'm, I'm just giving you a, I understand. a, you know, yeah. a strange example. Okay. And here's the other thing. I mean, those are analytic tools, right? But I'm going to say this. How many world championships do the Oakland A's win? None. Okay. <laughs> none, none since none in a while. <laughs> okay. And isn't one of their ex-employees working for the Cleveland Browns? <laughs> Am I right or well, wrong? the point I understand, but the point being that how, the, with all due respect, and the question is, how do you know? It's not. It's, that's not meant as a slam on you. It's meant how do you analyze to ensure that you're making the best decision possible? Well, because of because of trial and error, what I've done, um, whether it's been growing up a coach's kid, coaching, and then in personnel, I know what works and what doesn't work. And I'll give you a perfect example. I mean, I was raving about a young man from Tennessee. And I wish I could remember his last name. It, it was, I think it was Mark Jackson, maybe, or something like that. But he played corner. I mean, he played safety, played receiver, was punt returner, kick returner, right? He was a jack of all trades, really good at all of it, right? But he's 5'10, okay? And Bill Parcells asked me, he said, How many years did you coach, Drew? And I said, 17, coach. He said, Obviously, not blanking enough, right? And he says, Small guys wear down. Big guys don't get any smaller, right? <laughs> and he says, if we're going to take midgets, I know that's a derogatory term now. Sorry about that, little people. Put it on, put it on parcels. Go yeah, ahead. Put yeah. it on parcels. Um, they better walk on water, okay? And I 
threw one right at him. I said, Dave, make it. And he goes, walked on water. <laughs> right. So that's, that's where I'm going with okay. a lot of things. I, I mean, I've seen so many and, and a lot of the younger people won't understand this, but my Rolodex is pretty full. Mm-hmm. And I can say this guy I've, wrote, I've already written 25 times before. I know who this guy is. I know he's a slow Mike linebacker, right? That can't cover anybody in space, right? But he's wearing a neck roll and he can go fill a gap, right? But how many snaps is he really going to play? And is he really that valuable? Is he going to be that valuable on teams? No. So, I mean, there's there's an access to, you know, not an access, but a background of seeing what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. And the one thing I take the greatest pride in, that I was in that war room, and we drafted 67 Pro Bowl appearances while I was there. Drafted. Not free agents. Drafted. And that was second best in the entire NFL in those 18 years. So I was pretty proud of that. You know? And you have to make sure that you take a lot of risk out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and try to get the, what we always said, the higher, the cleaner they have to be. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, yeah. Who's the uh, who's the riskiest player you ever took that worked out? Whew. Injury wise or character wise? Yeah, both. Yeah, all okay. either or all. Oof. Who uh, did you have to plead to get a guy picked, and then it turned out to be? <laughs> well, I pleaded to try to get one picked, and I got overruled. <laughs> uh, we'll get into that in a second. Um, probably risk was probably Sean Lee. Because of the knee. And he never, he never, ever made it through a season, ever. But when he played, he was one of the best I'd ever seen. I mean, he was as good as Datwin, Zach Thomas. He just could not stay healthy. Yeah. You know, um, character wise, I didn't plead um, other than saying we shouldn't. And it was when we took Hardy as a free agent. Yeah. I didn't think that was the way to go. I just didn't. So that's the, Sure. Now the now the short one, the one I pleaded and pleaded for, um, was Jordy Nelson, and I single handedly saw him beat Texas by himself at Texas, and Jason Garrett and I were sitting at the Senior Bowl, and you know I said he says that's your pet cat, and that's 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 Parcells' <laughs> term, you know that's your boy, yeah that's your boy, I that's said, your boy. I said, I said yeah. He goes, he goes, ah. he goes, he looks a little clunky. And I go, I go, well, I said, I saw him smoke a geep to lead, right? In one on one mm-hmm. coverage, mm-hmm. right? I said, I, seen, I saw him beat Texas single handedly. I kept arguing and arguing with him the whole time. And I kept saying, you know, hey, uh, you know, what do we, what does this guy not have? I mean, he's a punt returner. I mean, he's a receiver. He makes plays, right? Well, we don't, we, we pass him up and we hire the receiver coach, Jimmy Robinson from Green Bay. And, he comes in and we do a little review of what you're looking for in a receiver by every coach, you know, receivers, tight ends. We did that every single year just to make sure we were getting exactly what the coaches wanted. Well, Jason goes, you know, he says you had Jennings, you had driver. He said, you had Jordy. He said, he said, you had a lot of you know, James Jones. He said, you had a lot of real guys up there. He goes, who's your best? He goes, hands down, Jordy Nelson. <laughs> and I went <laughs> just like that. And Jason goes, Yeah. He tells that story all the time because I was beating him up. I was breaking out a Louisville slugger on him every day, and he just he wouldn't do it. Yeah, you know? and we had we had to where we could have taken him in the back end of the second round, and you know we would have taken him in the top of the fourth, you know, but he was already gone. So, so put some numbers to that. So I'm sure that's extensive film work. It's watching live. You can see the guy. Analytic. Should we hit the stinger here? Is this the first oh, sure, Conley yeah. CPA well, yeah. hang on analytic second. Me, question here? If you don't mind, let me, one, let me get the, st- wait, let me get the, uh, let me get no, the stinger going Conley here. CPA. Yeah, hang okay. on a second. One second. We'll get the stinger. <laughs> Boom. Go. Okay. Brought to you by the oh, Conley yeah, CPA sorry, yeah, group. Yeah, Thank the Conley you. Conley CPA group. They're fantastic people. Go ahead. So combine wise, when you're watching, what's what's kind of answer that question? What what are you looking for in a receiver? What do you look for in a defensive lineman? What are the numbers that you look for first scouting wise? Well, like, I mean, and again, it's, it's a specific to a position. Right. Um, if you can't move laterally, you can't play in, in the NFL. You really can't. Um, so you look at the shuttle. 
right off the bat, the 20-yard okay. shuttle. Yeah. Because it shows you whether they can bend, whether they can move laterally, or whether they can accelerate, right? You'd be surprised. <laughs> that's all posi- that, that one covers all positions there? Pretty much. Pretty so. much, yeah. Okay. Defensive line, would you th- what would you think it would be? Now, you got a vertical, you got a broad, right? You got a shuttle, and you got a three cone, and you got a 40. What would you think? Give me a three cone. Nope. Broad jump. Reason. <laughs> Explosiveness. Explosiveness. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Pass rush. Okay. Now, vertical's always up, but they can't bend. Right. You'd be surprised yeah. how many guys can go up that are really stiff that can go out, bend, land, okay, and stay on balance. Right. I mean, it's it's pretty valuable. That's one of the most valuable tools that that I saw as a defensive lineman. All that's right, well, that's because okay. okay. in the coverage of that, so from a fan perspective, you know how often people talk about the broad jump results? No. <laughs> no. Never. What are they running 40? Yeah, yeah no, right. no doubt. Right. So Sean, that's, that's interesting. That's Sean Martin one. blocks a kick mm-hmm. on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So is he one of those guys that has this? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know yet. I mean, I can tell you that he can come out of his stance and he can bend. I mean, and for a man his size – He's, he's got really good flexibility. He's got all the traits. You know, he just needs to tie a lot of things together. He needs some time to develop. He really does. And mm-hmm. he's missed a lot of practice time, too. Sure, so, sure, absolutely. I mean, that, that hurts you. But when I mean, you walk out, if you had your, if you had your Cowboys uh, scouting hat on, actually, guys don't wear hats. They always wear those very nice golf shirts. And very well manicured when the scouts come out. When you, when you started watching, looking at West Virginia, if you were still in that role, I would imagine Sean Martin's one of those guys. You immediately go like, okay, let me take my notebook out. <laughs> right? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll throw another parcel that doesn't match you. He said, when you're sitting in the airport, how many guys you see like that? He said, they don't grow in trees. All right. You know, it, it, just body types alone, you have to look at guys like Body that. type makes you, okay, look at them. That's right. That's all that does is that's opens all, the door to right. say, okay, now let's do some that's evaluation. Right. You know, because, uh, I mean, again, you could look. I mean, there's some, there's some things that just – still just bother me like you would not believe like arm length right i mean short arm offensive linemen struggle i mean because they can't stay in contact plus you know when you playing against a longer player they can't get their hands in placement because you're out leveraged just by length alone and you can't stay you can't sustain a block so what overcomes that <laughs> what, anything much. i mean you're just going to automatically disqualify <laughs> extensions um, certain number, they're not there. They go to the back of the line. Well, now again, it's got to show up on tape because again, a guy can play short armed. And if it, if it doesn't show up on tape, then you go, okay, well then he, it's not a deficiency and it's not terminal. There are some guys, I mean, there was one a couple of years ago that went to Baltimore and I said, this is terminal. I said, this guy can't sustain a block. I said, anytime anybody, would that be somebody quicker, from a big 10 school by chance? Uh, No. Okay. No. But my point is that, you know, there are certain things I see that just don't work. And there's certain body type, there's certain (laughs) biomechanical issues also that certain people have that they cannot function in this league. I mean, they can't, well, they can't function here and they can't function in the NFL. I mean, and a lot of it's to do with flexibility too. You'd be surprised. Evaluate Zach Frazier. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this. Um, yeah, do it. You know, I already did. I already did it with him. Um, he plays longer than his length. Um, he looks like he's short armed, and he's really not. He's thirty two and five eighths, right? If he was thirty one, as I thought he was a thirty two and five eighths. Exactly. Exactly. I, I mean, too. when you watch yeah. play, that certainly looks thirty two and five eighths. We're going to bring him over to Daniels. Thirty two yeah. and five eighths. Yeah, okay. Thirty two and five eighths. Measure around his neck. There, yeah. you got it perfectly. <laughs> All right, thirty two and five eighths. There's easier ways to do it. I'll, I'll, I don't even have to pull out the tape. I can actually watch where the arms actually hang on the hips, you know, and hang on your legs. Yeah. I mean, I just I can. So he's got I've 30, seen it so many times. So thirty two and five eighths. Yes, um, smart, um, physical, um, great quickness. Um, he needs to stay in contact at the second level better. His feet need to follow his hands. I've told him this. Um, he's gotten better um, against Tech. He played really well. Um, he played really well against DCU too. Um, you know, does he have a lot of knockdowns? Yes, he does. You know, does he is he tenacious? Yes, he is. Um, he again, this goes always back to who? Who do you remind him of? You know, um, I said he was a better Biotic. We took Biotic mm-hmm. out of Wisconsin. He's better than him. Yeah, and Biotic just starting in the NFL. 
you know, for the Cowboys. So he's got a chance. No, he's got a chance. He's going to play for 10 years if he stays healthy. Yeah. You know, what's, what's interesting is that colleges are just now hiring GMs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what's interesting when you consider the amount of money involved and how important talent evaluation is and every other major sport at the professional level of course has gm and town evaluation college football is behind the curve on you know, that they are there's only about uh about six to seven of us and really only three that have nl nfl experience that's it and there's none that have coaching and nfl experience other than me you know it's either you got nfl experience or you've got you know recruiting experience or you've got a little bit of coaching experience you know, it's just, I think they're behind because they don't understand that roster management is going to be a full-time job. They think it's just like, oh, we're just going to keep recruiting these, these four-star and five-star guys and we're going to be just fine. Yeah, we did this this way and it's, it's worked for us. Well, those guys are leaving now. If those five-stars aren't playing like year one, some of them are leaving. So it's like, okay, well, are you prepared for that? Some of them are. D- does that mean when you see so and so before you know anything, when you see this this person's a five star, four star, does that mean anything to you? No, yeah, really doesn't. I mean, I'll, I'll be blunt with you; it really doesn't. Because again, I've seen some young men that you know I evaluated last year, and I said, "How's this guy a four star guy?" And they go, well, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, he can't play," and they go. Why do you say that? Well, so I can't move laterally and he can't, he can't, doesn't have any foot speed to actually displace anybody in the offensive lineman. And I go, how did this guy get the four-star rating? And I said, well, he was that big in ninth grade. I said, okay, well, he was 6'4", he's 295 pounds in ninth grade. I said, do they ever reevaluate their star system? Do they ever decrease a star? So I asked those guys from like on three and 24-7 and rivals and all that. They said, no. I said, but I said, you give them a star when somebody offers them, though, don't you? You know, because all of a sudden, I'm, I lived in Texas. So Texas and A&M offered a kid. It was a three-star. All of a sudden, he's a four-star next day. Okay? So to me, they mean nothing. They really do. And when Clemson was really starting to come on, you'd be surprised how many three-stars they had on that football team hmm. that ended up becoming really good NFL players because they developed. And – a lot of the five-star kids are height, weight, speed. They've already been given those grades early, right? They're early commits, right? And normally they're topped out as far as the talent goes, especially like in the offense, defensive line. Because they're at a school that's got 15, 16 coaches, right? They've got a strength program since ninth grade, and they kind of are what they are, right? I'd rather take a kid that is a little bit smaller, a heck of a lot better athlete that's got a chance to be a heck of a lot better, you know, and that's, and again, I don't like, I don't like offering ninth grade kids. I don't like offering sophomores. I really don't because you never truly know what you're going to get body type wise, unless they're already there. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I, I still have a tough time with a 5'10", 155 pound kid. I just, I've, I've got a tough time with so it. So you're saying I can't play. <laughs> That's what you're saying. I'm saying I, I couldn't play either. I was 5'10". <laughs> you were a quarterback? I was a quarterback. Broke my broke my spine. Um, mm. I broke my fourth and fifth lumbar early in my career, my second year. Um, so I got lucky, and uh, now it was illegal at the time. Um, he kept me on scholarship and let me be a student assistant and did it that way. And I was really a full-time coach. You know, down at Mesa. Because I remember you, we, we were talking at practice this summer, and you said you, you have good conversations with Garrett Green mm-hmm. because you said, Buddy, I was you, I a am. smaller quarterback. Yes. Yeah. I told him, I said, You got to be prepared to play another play. You can't take people on. You got to be smart. You got you to learn how to slide. You got to get out of bounds because, <sighs> I mean, there were Sundays where I felt like I was in a car wreck. I mean, because. Big guys hitting little guys, it's the law of inertia. Yeah. I mean. Doesn't work well. You get bounced. I mean, and again, I got bounced. I got bent all the way back over. That's how I broke my fourth and fifth lumbar. I mean, so it just doesn't work. So I told him, I said, learn to survive, you know, because it's a game of survival. You know. He's a fiery little dude, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. 
he said something to me Saturday. He goes, he goes, man, he says, he said, why is this so tough? And I said, you know, I said, guess what? I said, it's like this all the time, baby. I said, get used to it. You know, yeah. It's going to be like this the whole year. So go back to valuation for a second. Mm -hmm. Harder to, cause you, you've got to do both here. Mm -hmm. Harder to project high school into high level division one or division one power five players into the NFL. Oh, the high school kids into the power five. It's not even close. Because they haven't developed yet. Yeah, and, and plus you've got to offer them so early. And I never really truly believed that until Mac Brown told me that at Texas. He said, if you're not the first or second offer on some of these kids, sometimes they won't let you back in the door. Sure. And I went, are you kidding me? I was like, you're the University of Texas. This is when he was at Texas. And he goes, yeah. He said, I'm serious. And I go, that's insane. Because if I was a kid that grew up in Texas, there is no other place that I would want to go. I said, I'm going to go to University of Texas. Just like when I was in Ohio, I was like, I want to go to Ohio State. You know, I'm sure it's less like here, West Virginia. I want to go to West Virginia. You know, he's like, not these days. If they're not the first or second offer, he says, we may not be able to get back in. I was like, I think you could. You know, but he was like, no, sometimes it doesn't. So, but that's, that's harder than, than evaluating guys into the yeah, NFL. Makes sense. It is. Transfer portal. Mm -hmm. As you said, you don't know how many are going in. And that is the greatest risk. So you got these guys that are starting to make plays, and then you might lose them. Mm -hmm. What do you think the future looks like going forward for a team to be successful in roster management? What What are the musts that they must do every year in order to have a roster that is made to win? I think you still have to have about 60, 40 um, high school athletes to develop. I really do. Um because I think if you turn rosters over, and even in the NFL, you, you, every roster gets turned over about 20 to 21% every year. And sometimes that cohesion, sometimes that team building, sometimes that feel, that, that chemistry, you lose it by maybe losing two players here or there, you know, that were great leaders or something like that, or the room just felt, felt different. Well, I think if you wholesale change it, it's so hard mm -hmm. to build that chemistry with these guys. Because, I mean... I'll tell you what, this offensive line now, they're tight. I mean, they're, I mean, they're tight as far as playing, but they're also tight together. You know, they always call them uh, trough guys. They're all in the trough together, you know, and that's a good thing. You know, now you bring, you lose three or four of those guys and then you try to replace them with guys from, you know, who knows where. I mean, are they going to fit with that room? Are they going to be the right time kind of people? So I think you have to keep that development going. I really do. You have to have not a robust collective. You have to have an equal collective. That's, that's all I want. Just, just let me be equal with everybody else. Now, you're not going to be equal with 10 or 11 places, and you guys know which ones I'm talking about because they are financially way ahead, and they can buy pretty much anybody they want. I mean, and let's just be honest. Yeah. So, so speaking of that, and in the NFL, you said the – we were talking one of the great advantages is you know what the contracts are <laughs> and when people are going and when they're when they're coming in you know what the budget is and now you have no idea no. at the college level who's leaving and also what the budget is so do you have a role in the budget i mean how cuz now i the, the ad of ohio state said the other day some kids want $5000 for a visit yes so huh yes yes so for an official visit how much 5000 5, for an official I've visit. I've not heard that. And, you and, heard that, and now, and now they're yeah. And now they're unlimited official visits. <laughs> so, yeah. so don't tell me how do you, how do you work? Do you, have, do you have any impact on the money? I'm not supposed to. No. I know. I know you're not supposed to, but I mean, that, that, that's, a dis, that's a distinction that, no can't, con, that can't continue. That's mm. impo it's impossible for you to do your job and for Neil Brown to do his job if there's not some cross pollination with the people who have the money, well, that's what Brad always says. That's why that's he says that can't exist going forward. It can't exist that way. It can't exist. You can't run a business with having someone else managing your business. No, but the the guy procuring the talent should have to call someone else to see what the budget is, or should he just know what his budget is? He should know what the budget is. Thank you. No comment. Next question. I know. I told you to sit there. I'll handle it. Okay. You don't have to answer that. We got it. <laughs> I don't know where I was. I didn't know kids are asking for five thousand dollars to visit, and it was not just this year. You gotta be kidding me, man! Yeah, it's been the last yeah. couple of years. That was a testimony in Congress by the. Uh, They're also asking for money to actually commit to bonus signing a commitment bonus or a CB. 
going in NIL deal like early, you know, which some are doing depending on the state. But you know, but the other side of, and this gets off another subject, and we talk about this all the time, is if you're going to go, if 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 you're going to go that, if you're going to, my compliance (laughs) officer's right here. (laughs) If you're going to go that route, I mean, now we've gone so far to the other side. If you're going to go that route, then it won't be long before a coach says, "You know what? You're fired." Not you, the player. We paid you this money. You're fired. Three weeks in, you're fired. Not paying anymore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's also going to have to come a point where there is going to have to be a salary cap put on this. Yes. You know, because, yes. because if it doesn't happen, the haves will be the haves and the have nots will be the have nots. You know, and it's also going to, if it doesn't get regulated, it's going to hurt every other program mm-hmm. within the university. But the SEC and the Big Ten will say, we don't need any screwy, any screwy ca- salary cap. We'll do what we want. We got our own deal with TV. But hey, we Drew, got off hey, the Drew, subject. Hey, I'm Drew, sorry. J- jump closer to that mic. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, so the, so however, as you said, there needs to be a salary cap. There's been cheating in college sports. Allegedly. Since the first day of college sports. And we all know the schools. And we all know the schools. In basketball, there's just a certain group that they've been buying guys forever. Mm-hmm. Football, they buy guys forever. That's why I think it does make sense to say, hey, there's a salary cap. Well, there might be a salary cap, and the school can say, hey, this is exactly how much we're paying. But you, we all know that there are going to be other sources some way, somehow, um, that are going to get money to the kids. And so it, it, it's never been balanced, and I don't think it'll ever be balanced. No, but I think at least it'll, it'll level out the middle third mm-hmm. of, of, the, of athletics. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it's, going, it's going to hurt the other programs. It is. Because if, if you're not – I mean, the non-revenue sports are getting hurt by this. They are. The facilities are getting hurt by this, too. Because where are you going to put your money? Mm-hmm. You're going to put it into facilities. Or you're going to put it into the NIL. I mean, I, you see what I'm saying? I mean, sure, absolutely. If I'm a fundraiser, I'm going like, Phew. yeah, you know, yeah. I'm super do hard, this? super hard. You know, and and put it this way: if you're if you're a donor, you cannot write it off, right? I mean, you can write it off as a marketing, you know, part coming out. But if I'm coming to you every single year, every single year, because once the money's in. It's going out. So if I come to you every single year and say, I need three and a half million, aren't you going to get a little tired of me coming by? <laughs> I mean, really? That's what happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he was again, over. so that's what I'm saying. I think that there's got to be something regulated and to where even those people will feel like they're not getting <laughs> held up every single year. You know. three, yeah, three guys before the game is brought to us by Comax Business Systems. They can handle your business data, IT security, even your phone system. They become your partner, allow you to focus on your business so you can stop worrying about data and documents. Many of their first clients since they started 25 years ago are still their clients today. Comax's digital phone systems competitively priced the most efficient technology available. Call them and they'll give you a free price quote. Three guys also brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center. And uh, they've been in business now nearly 50 years, located in Winfield. That's the bricks and mortar location, or you can visit them on the website at burdettcamping.com. That's burdettcamping.com. Went to TCU the other day. They're going through the parking lot. Don't have this confirmed. Yeah. I mean, it's RV, RV, RV oh, yeah. fifth wheels, whole thing. I think they were all from Burdett. Hundreds of them from Burdett. From Burdett. Probably. Didn't yeah. confirm it yet, but I'm pretty sure. We're working on that. They were, from, they were from Burdett. Where's the game of college football going? What's the absolute essential that a team must have to be successful? <laughs> a ro- um, a, a, an equal trust, an equal collective. If you don't, you're not going to survive. You say teams are going to get priced out of the business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, again, especially the ones that really don't have that big a budget to start out with. I mean, you know, God save the, like, the Sun Belts of the world, the Americans and all that. I mean, they don't have the money to do it in the first place. I mean, I mean, I, I know they can survive, but to actually put money in kids' pockets with an NIL, I think it's really, really hard for, for conferences like that, for schools that size. Yeah. Are kids fundamentally coming into college football better or worse than they used to be? I mean, everyone's playing the game nowadays, seven on seven all year long, la, 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 la. Better or worse? Worse. Why? Worse skill wise, worse preparation wise. Understanding. Worse fundamental wise. Mm-hmm. Fundamentals are awful. 
I mean, these kids, like you said, they play seven on seven. And I'll give you the first problem is they never tackle anybody. I mean, and they never tackle in practice anymore either because it's all spread offenses and it's all pitching the, pitching the rock all over the yard. Um, you know, it's still about blocking and tackling. It truly is. And the fundamentals are poor. They really are. Now, they run better routes. You know, they cover better, right? But here's the other thing. It turns quarterbacks into quarterbacks with no conscience. You know what I mean by that? I'm throwing seven on seven, and I go, you know, play all day. I throw five, six picks. Mm-hmm. Right? Doesn't, bo- doesn't bother you. Doesn't bother me because mm-hmm. I just threw 15 touchdowns, mm-hmm. right? And that's how they go to games now. It's like I'm forcing balls. You know, I'm playing with my big arm. You know, I'm, I'm doing things, you know, that I did all summer long, and there's no consequences, right? Because in seven on seven, there's no consequences. I mean, really. I mean, what, do you get a trophy or whatever? I mean, big deal. Right? You're not playing for a conference championship. You're not playing for a state championship. So you think QBs aren't as They're not intellectually prepared. prepared? No. No. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I'd be willing to bet you you could bring any high school kid in here, any high school kid, anywhere, and ask him to ID a mic, right? Or tell me why I'm going to change a protection. Tell me what I'm going to do with a four strong or four weak, right? And where are my hots? And I'll bet you none of them can answer that question. Not the whole thing. It, because they don't know. They really don't. And, again, there's a lot of college quarterbacks that don't know because they're not asked to do it either. Mm-hmm. You know, So, I mean, are they prepared for college football? No. Are they prepared for the NFL? No. Not very many of them. Now, there are certain cases where they are. Certain places are not notorious but great at preparing quarterbacks for the NFL. You know, Others aren't. And we knew it. We're like, okay, this is going to take a while. Or, you know, oof, you know, you're going to have to learn a whole new system because everything was verbiage. You know, all this no huddle, it's all verbiage. You know, you give them a, <laughs> a call from the West Coast offense, and those guys go like, holy, really? I mean, because you tell everybody what to do in the West Coast offense. Give me a call. Oh, gosh. Um, 636, um, A flat, B cross. Um, you know, oh, I forgot. Protection would have been scat. You know, you know. It just goes so you're on literally a, telling everyone what they're doing on one play. Yes. That's why it comes out as a sentence. Yes, because because <laughs> they want a bigger they want a bigger play call. I mean, they want a bigger play sheet because they want answers for everything in the NFL. This came from you know, I mean, Gruden's a West Coast guy. I mean, it just came from it came from guys that you know you don't have enough time to practice all those plays, so you have to tell them what the motion is. You know, hey, it's a, it's it's a rip, it's a return. I mean, they they, they have to tell everybody everything because then. They can run all these plays, you know, and that's, I mean, you saw those play sheets. I mean, some of them are 400 plays. Well, they hadn't repped all those 400 plays that week. They maybe repped, you know, 150 of them, you know, but what are you going to do with the rest? Yeah. You know, so like I said, it's, and then, you know, hey, it's two word Q, you know, in college, you know, it's, it's, it's rabbit, it's rabbit, rabbit left, or it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a scat blue, you know, I mean, it, you know, I mean, you, sir, you've heard all the, all mm-hmm. the verbiage. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, you're the general manager of an NFL team. Mm-hmm. You get to pick your head coach, either past or present. Who are you hiring? Bill Parcells. Oh. Reason? That took long. Um, he was incredibly hard on them, incredibly good to them. Uh, treated everybody the same, treated everybody different, right? Made everybody walk on eggshells. Right. And all the coaches would say, somebody's going to get their tail ripped today and it may be me. Right. Well, he held everybody accountable, including the personnel people. I mean, and again, you have to be, you not only have to lead people, you have to control players. And I really truly believe that a lot of players feared him, you know, and he made it quite evident that, you know, Hey, guess what? You screw this up you'll be going somewhere else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but he was also very good to people too. You know, he really was, um, very good organizer, very good motivator. Um, you have to be a very good X and O guy. You have to understand both sides of the ball. You also have to be somewhat of a prick. Okay. 
to be a very good high school, I mean, a head coach. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm totally with that. You do. I'm totally with that. So yeah. who's your who's your current active? Who do you think the best is there? Oof. Wow, that's hard. Um, gosh, that is really hard. Um, dang, Mike Tomlin. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, does he have a losing season? Not, Not yet. One. Not yet. Well, <laughs> Not yet. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, but again, that's oh yeah, it's a, yeah, that's hard to do. Yeah. I mean, that's really hard to do. I mean, what about Belichick now? I mean, and I got a great deal of respect for him. I mean, but you know, Mike Tomlin's had a heck of a lot more different quarterbacks than he has had. Mm -hmm. I mean, and won how many Super Bowls? Yeah. yeah. Um, how many guys do you have currently inside WVU football that are currently at other schools that you have evaluated and ready in case they take a dip into the portal? Can't say. But you do have a list. Yes. You do have video. Yes. You're ready. I'm not supposed to be. Oh, really? No. Well, what's wrong? I mean, why not? You no. can, you can, it's a free no. world. You can have guys' tapes. No, we're not supposed to have evaluations on those guys. Really? Nope. Okay. Nope. But, but every other school does. Probably. Oh, yeah. You know what I know. <laughs> no, know. no rules right now. No rules. Yeah, the only rule is there is no, there, yeah. there aren't any rules yeah, right now. Time. Unless you have a basketball player trying to, trying to get from. I'm just, I, I'm just trying to do things the right way. Well, I know you are. I mean, of course. Of course. That, that's By all means. That's your, your advanced scouting as well, right? Yes. Team Further teams down ahead. All right. Can, can you hit my stinger again? Oh, yeah. Can, can I got another like, stats question. You want coming. the whole? Why don't no, we just play this quick stinger. You don't need oh, to play the whole thing. Oh, you want the quick thing. one? Yeah, because we might do another one. Okay. Hang do on a second. All right. Stand by. Stand by. There you go. Brought Here. to you by. Uh, brought to us by the Conley Group. Now, the Conley CPA Group, folks, complete public service accounting and consulting, serving clients throughout the state of West Virginia since 1985. There's so much more than just filing a return. They take a client-specific approach to understand your client's needs, challenges they face to provide valuable solutions and outcomes. Just like Drew, they're providing solutions and outcomes for certain situations at the Conley CPA Group. And value beyond just the numbers. Value but I'm going to ask a numbers question here. So beyond the, the tape that you're watching for the teams you're scouting, what's the one or two stats that you look at that you think are the most valuable predictor of a team's success or that a team is good? What do you use? Scoring offense, scoring defense, turnover margin. So just that? That's it. That's it. Yards per play you don't care about? Nope. Just those first two? Yep. And turnovers? Yeah. We know turnovers. Yeah. Okay. And then, Pretty like simple. I said, scoring defense, you know, scoring offense. I mean, makes a heck of a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, it was funny. Whenever I was coordinating defense, head coach would always come in to me and say, yeah, you can only give up 19, right? And say, Okay. Understand why? Because you only think you're going to score twenty, <laughs> right? So I mean, it makes a heck of a lot of sense, right? Um, I thought you were going to ask more, more so like when I do the two deep and everything else and break down the opponent. Um, so you do a two deep of the other team, absolutely. You evaluate each of those players. Yep. You submit that to Neil, mm -hmm. and you're walking them through. Mm -hmm. And I give. And is there the total overview? They're most vulnerable here. Here's where we. I think we attack. Yes. Yeah. You yes. all that. I'm the mis I'm the mismatch guy. Mm -hmm. As we would call it, I find the fish. Mm -hmm. you know? What's that mean? You find the fish. What does that mean? We find the I find the mismatches. Yeah. You know? And if there's a big mismatch, I mean, they'll know about it. Yeah. Um. You know, I give them all the breakdown. It's a positive for the player. Positives. Some just positive. And then there are the negatives. And then how to attack that negative. And again, that's. That's what I told him. I said, I spent 18 years punching holes in players. I can punch holes in all of them. I mean, there's not anybody without not one flaw. I mean, there's no perfect player out there. Now, you're starting that, though, with the film study, or is there other numbers film that study. come into pass? You're film just study. going straight film straight first, film. and I'll yes. just see it right away. Okay, That's I right. see there's something there. That's right. Okay. That's right. See, Hoppy, that, see, Hoppy went to Africa on a safari this mm -hmm. summer. Hoppy, that's uh, put this in a context of your trip. So what he does – He's kind of like the, the leader of the hyena squad. He finds he finds <laughs> the wounded he finds the wounded animal that's kind of limping across the and Serengeti, attacks. and he says, "That's your wildebeest. Go get that one right there," because he got a little bit of a limp. Yeah, that's what you're doing. That's right. Not so much limp, but really, I mean, well, that has a little something to do with during the game, but it's more of what they cannot do, mm -hmm. you know, and where they struggle. You know, is he bad in space? Is he bad in man coverage? 
you know, is, is the offensive tackle, does he struggle with speed to power? I mean, those types of things. I'm going to tell those guys because especially when you're looking at it as a player, it's great to know the strengths and weaknesses of who you're lining up against. And before, I mean, I saw a lot of things, you know, with advanced reports in the NFL, and some of them were a little too extensive to where there was so much information that it was like, okay, that's way too much. So I tried to get together with the coaches and, you know, and say, look, what do you guys want? You know, and I knocked it down to maybe offense and defense total, maybe 11, 12 pages. That's it. Do you see the mismatch of Frazier and that nose tackle Williams? Yeah. Yeah. Poor Frazier. buddy. Poor Dominic Williams. Because the, Dominic because Williams. the nose tackle couldn't move laterally. Yeah. Frazier moved him. Frazier moved, moved him. him. Yes. North-south. But he also made him run. When he started zoning him, yeah. made him run. Oh, really? Yeah. And then when he turned sideways, He's got the hold. didn't have any leverage, right? Oh, yeah, he grabbed him because he didn't want him to work to the second level. Yeah, right, right. They were trying to free the backers up. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, I, I I knew what he was. He was a true nose tackle, and I knew exactly how he was going to rush Zach and everything else, and they knew that too. I mean, they get the report. It's part of the scouting report now. They take it out of the advance, and they put it in the scouting report, and they, they can give it to their players if they want, and I think all of them do. I think. I mean, I know mm-hmm. the ones that, that have because they've come to me and said, hey, this this was really what this guy was. That was good. Mm-hmm. You know? So hopefully it's valuable to them. Yeah, I know it's valuable to, you know, to Neil. You know, we talk. Real quick, how far ahead are you? I'm two already, weeks, two I'm opponents already, I'm, already, I'm already done with Houston. Yeah. Already done. Okay. I'm starting on Oklahoma State today. Yeah. Uh, normally, I would be, it would be the Thursday before that week that it would actually get distributed to the analysts and to the GAs. Then on that Sunday, it goes to Neil and the defensive coordinator and the offensive coordinator coaches. So it's the Sunday before is the complete product. The Thursday before that is actually to help the analysts and the GAs get their scouting reports ready too. I mean, I just, I'm not doing their scouting report. I'm just helping them with it. Um, so it's really that far ahead. Yeah. You know? And it, it, this, this bye week. <laughs> Some are calling it that. I get ahead. Yeah. You know, I might actually get, I might actually skip ahead again. I might get really ahead. And then what I'll do is that Sunday I'll recheck everything before I go to the final with the coaches, you know, and that's usually Sunday morning. Make sure injuries and yeah. change. Yeah. Well, and just and put it this way: Are they? Did they change something? Are they? Are they flip flopping the receivers? Are the receivers? Is a tight end missing? You know, because I had one at TCU that I thought was going to play. He was out dressed. Um, Eighty four. That was a receiver, and he was really really productive for the first like two or three weeks, and then. He just kind of fell off a cliff, and he didn't Warren play. Warren Thompson. He didn't play at all. Thompson. Yeah, he transferred from Arkansas. Didn't see him. I mean, play. And I'm going like, okay, was he hurt? Because he was out there on the field. Yeah. You know, so they were running the same thing about Nico during warmups too. Yeah. Well, what's going on here? <laughs> um, we're, we've been talking about a lot of specifics as mm-hmm. far as you know that, but there's also a huge mental aspect of this game. How do you determine if the person has the right heart <laughs> to be successful? Because obviously West Virginia is a developmental program, always has been. And that heart that this team is showing, that fight that this team is showing, and resilience, that's kind of been the culture of this program. How do you figure that part of it out? I think that the greatest thing about the high school side of it is you get to spend so much more time with these kids. I mean, you get to spend time with them at the school. You get to spend time with them at their home, with their parents. You get to spend time with them on campus. I mean, you I mean because unofficial visits, I mean, they're unlimited, right? Get the official visit, you get spend time. I'll bet you we didn't get in person contact with the players in the NFL now, unless we brought them in for the thirty visit, right? You'd maybe get fifteen minutes at a bowl game, fifteen minutes at a, at the combine, and then if you really had an issue with them, it was you know bring them in for the thirty visit. I think that's the greatest part about this is I think you can gauge, you know, these kids, once you bring them on campus, and again, the more time you spend with them, the less they can hide. 100%. And and the more people that you interview and the more people you talk to, I always tell these guys, that was part of my presentation, I said when, you know, when I came to a school, I said, you know, I talked to as many people as I could. I really would. I mean, from equipment managers to trainers to strength coach to the liaison to the coach. I mean, I'm trying to get an opinion on this kid from everybody. 
because you want to be right about the character, the heart, you know, you sure. see if they actually, because again, I'll, I'll, I digress a little bit. I, my question was, as I would say, does guy love football? They go, oh yeah, he loves football. Can you give me an example? If they had to sit there and pause, he didn't love football. He didn't love football. Right. Because usually there was an example, like he's always in the, you know, cause like with Fraser, I go down and, you know, get my cardio at like five o'clock every day. Well, he's in there doing something extra every day in the weight room. Every day. So that tells me, guess what? It's important to him, you know? Um, but I told them, I said, you know, <laughs> I said, when one person says you're not a good person, sometimes that's personal, yeah. right? If five people tell me you're not a good person, you're not a good person. Probably a bad day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's something that I think you can research a lot better in the high school side. Transfer portal is going to be a little bit harder, but you got to go through the coaches that did coach them, the head coach from high school. You got to talk to people that know them. I mean, you got to find out because we never really truly made a mistake on players' ability. We made mistakes on players' character. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and going back, you just triggered one. The worst one was Jason Williams, the kid from Western Illinois, right? I mean, Six two and a half, probably two thirty five, <laughs> ran like four four, right? And Keith Brookings came out of the meeting room and told me, he said, "You screwed this one up, right?" And I said, "Why is that?" He said, "This kid doesn't really even like ball." He said, "He doesn't want to spend time with it. He doesn't want to learn it." He said, "You know." And guess what? We didn't spend enough time with the kid. We didn't. And we overlooked a lot of things because he was that fast and that athletic and everything else. And, you know, you make mistakes by going like, oh, hey, that's, that's the prettiest stone, right? Well, you make problems. Whenever, you know, whenever you find yourself saying, yes, but, you know, uh, well, this, but I. Well, but know. see, here's, here's the thing. And I, I was, I'm very lucky because I was on the coaching side too. When you're coaching, your job's always on the line. So you always want that prettier stone, right? You're willing to take that risk, mm -hmm. right? Because you go, hey, the reward might be really, really good, mm -hmm. right? Well, sometimes it doesn't work out. I mean, sometimes it does, but, you know, I'd rather have, I'd rather have the Zach Martins of the world than the Johnny Manziel. And that was, that was our decision, you know, that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, Zach Martins has been a pro bowler. I mean, well, no, he's been an all pro like seven times. So, you know, and he was the cleanest, you know, I mean, position flex and everything else. And it was like, everybody was like, we're good because he's safe. Yeah. So. Um, with this team, two more months to go in the regular season, seven more regular season games. They feel good about themselves right now. They feel confident about themselves. They were told they were going to finish 14th, but they're four and one and they're two and oh in the league. How much does mentality play within a team as a season goes on as they start to believe about themselves? Well, I think it's big. I really do. I mean, they started feeding on each other on Saturday. And I kept telling a couple of them, I said, look, I said, you make a play. I said, everybody will start feeding on it. Everybody. But here's the other thing. I mean, and I, <laughs> I was told that the crowd for Pitt would be better or as good as any place that I've ever been. And I said, hmm. Better in Auburn, Alabama. Better in Tennessee, Georgia. Better in Alabama, Tennessee. And they were like, yeah. Well, guess what? It was. We need that. Because those kids fed on that, too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because they feel supported. You know, because I'm going to tell you what now. They got a chip. Because when somebody tells you you're going to be dead last, uh, that ought to piss you off. Mm -hmm. And these people, when they get behind these kids, I mean, I saw it at Pitt. I mean... It was amazing. It really was. And they fed on it. And now they're going to start feeding on each other because, you know, once they start seeing that, hey, you know, there were a lot of them that were waiting for somebody else to make a play. Mm -hmm. Now they want to make that play because mm -hmm. now they know that somebody else is going to make the play too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, that's like Lockhart and Martin with those field goal blocks. Lockhart after the game said, I told those guys, I'm blocking this field goal, right? <laughs> and Martin comes back, and he said, they took that sack away from me on that spin of the quarterback that they ruled as an incomplete pass. And he said, they took that sack away from me. So I said, I'm going to block this field goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
it's this mentality that takes guys to a different level. That's and when right. you don't have that confidence, yeah. then the, it goes to the opposite. Yeah, you find ways to lose instead of finding ways to yeah, win. Don't remind me of that though, because when I saw Sean chasing after that block kick, I was like, "Oh God!" Oh no. my God! I was like, "I was like, I was like, Leon Lett, please yeah. no." <laughs> Neil Brown almost got there before anybody else. Uh, yeah, seriously, well, I was right. I was right behind him, but I stayed in the box. That's uh, I kept yelling. I was like, "No!" That's another yeah. part of the game, man. A lot of times, like we see that in college sports, sometimes, man, those little. Little things become massive. A score, yeah. time. What am I doing? What am I supposed to do? What shouldn't I do? Yeah. Woo! And most of the time, they're all covered. And and put it this way, you guys. I mean, you've been out there to practice. I mean, well organized, well disciplined. I mean, to the minute. Um, you know, they do a really good job. They know. They were told. Don't they were you told go near that. They were told. Thing. That's right. Once but it's blocked, also kids in the heat of the oh, moment, exactly. you can't yeah. keep everything, Right. That's right. There's the ball. I got to get the ball. So yeah. that happens. That's kind part of the kind deal. Of, kind of like us yeah. at a buffet. You know yeah. you're not supposed to keep yeah. eating, but you just keep going. Or you with M&M's out there in a big yeah. jar. Well, I didn't know about those. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, well, they're not here now. He's eating them all, oh, okay. so they're not here. So sorry. But you know, they're humans. I mean, you saw yesterday in the NFL, the, the guy from the Chargers intercepted the pass, and he could have probably run it all the way back. And instead he said he, just, he went down like, oh, the game's over. No, it's not over. There's two more minutes to play. <laughs> two, and the other team 2.30. Yeah. 2.30. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Well, here's the other one. Well, and again, uh, we got a little section. It's called not good ball. It's not good ball. Well, there's clips of that. Just like the week before, do you remember when Minnesota was driving down and they were they were four down, right? And they got a first down inside, like, what, the 12? And there was still 36 seconds left. They had no timeouts. They didn't spike the ball, oh. right? Mm. They rushed up there, got set, was in a huge rush. Play clock was running, right? But they had just gotten the first down, so they still had – Probably seven seconds to get everything set, right? He throws a pick in the yeah. end zone. Why not spike the ball, get organized, mm -hmm. get ready, and do that? Bad ball. So you got to got to remind everybody about bad ball. And he does. <laughs> Coach Brown does. Yeah, yeah, Neil does show those guys every yeah, it's week. Called bad ball. Bad ball. Yeah. Good ball. Bad ball. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Well, this hadn't been that hard, has it, Fantasy? Has no, it been enjoyable no, for you? No, but I get, I get to go back to the office, and I got to, like I said, start Oklahoma State. Do you wear your hair like that because your dad was military? No, actually, quite honestly, I want to get rid of the gray on the sides. <laughs> <laughs> and you I still think, can see a little bit of gray on the but, sides, even though. But you learned a lot from your dad. He was he was a tough guy. Uh, he was a drill instructor for 14 years and in the Marines. Um, then he coached for 32 years after that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was really tough. Tell them the story about when you went to college and you called your dad and complained about. <laughs> Pretty good story. Well, back in the day, I mean, scholarships were scholarships, and you got a room, you got board. I mean, you got the, the meal and everything else, right? The only extra money you got was laundry money <laughs> on Friday. And it was like $20, right? And I called him. I said, you know, I said, this $20 doesn't go a long way now, right? And he goes, you got three hots and a cot? And I go, <laughs> I go, yes, sir. He goes, you got to deal with it. <laughs> that was it. He said, you got to deal with it. Three hots and a cot. He says, three, three hots and a cot. Not talking about all various pepperoni rolls, no. the hots version. No. That was different. It's a different deal. Oh, okay. That's, that's yeah, a totally not, different not deal. Not even close. Three hots and a cot. But he also, I told Tony this, he also made me go across town. He wouldn't let me play for him. Oh, really? Yeah. He said, I do not want anybody to ever say you're playing quarterback because you're the, the coach's kid. Yeah. Right? So I had to go across town from, and I kicked the tail every single year. You beat your dad. Beat the tar out of him, especially my senior year. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> you make that's your bed first thing every day. Yes, I still do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bounce a quarter off of it. And here's the other one. Yeah, start. You there accomplished is, the first task of the day, right? There is never, there is never a piece of clothing mm -hmm. left on the floor. Uh -huh. yeah. Ever. That's called a turnover. No yep. turnovers. That's right. Yeah, turn totally with you. <laughs> Hey, buddy, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you. Fascinating. We really appreciate it. There he is. Really you can good. ask him if he'll come back again because there's not, we're not, I'm not through here. I got yeah, well, yeah. You have, an, you have an open <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not even getting started here. Well, once all this transfer portal stuff happens, maybe we get him after all that and kind of do an evaluation there. I was going to say, like, maybe that'd be, that's going to be a, Oof. Well, after clears. December, February. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, let's get that thing settled. Or we'll like that. Let's okay. do this. Let's yeah. keep the guys that we want here. That's, that's, what what we're, that's what I'm planning on doing. Yeah. Let's try, let's try, let's try to. <laughs> there may not be some of them I want. I mean, you never know. <laughs> yeah. I feel the same way here a lot of times. Yeah. Anyway, that's a whole different story. Excuse me? Yeah, that's no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Episode 494, kind of, kind of, three guys before the game, is now complete. Don't forget, Go Mart.
Get that rewards card, triple, I said triple rewards points every Saturday during the fall season. Get that card and do it now. Lou Wendell Marine Sales, the single largest pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia, family owned for decades, recognized as the state of West Virginia's experts in pontoon boating, the biggest dealer in the state, so why wouldn't you? They feature the Avalon pontoon boats. Visit them at LouWendellMarineSales.com. By Burdette Camping. Burdette Camping Center in Winfield, who offers you the forever warranty. You buy it there as long as you own it. The warranty lasts forever. Three guys also brought to us by the tremendous folks at the Conley CPA Group. They prevent, uh, present, I should say, value beyond the numbers and spreads on stats. Three guys will be back. As we get to ready, next week's a little different. We're going to preview Houston Tuesday. 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 Previewing Houston on Tuesday, and then we're going to do our post-Houston on Friday. So check it out. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. By the way, as yeah. mentioned the other day, that new gears. Oh, uh, yeah. New gear. The T-shirt's out, Hoppy. Oh, we see. It? We executed. See? Executed. As I projected. Well Shipped. done. As oh, really? Did you hear? As I projected, he said. Thanks for having Which... us. T-shirts are now available at episode800.com. <laughs> for our guest, Drew gold, Fabianich. Gold and, gold and blue. Well, sure they would yeah, be. Both yeah, we don't do red. Right. one? What is it? Episode800.com. Episode800.com. Yeah, you, I'll give you the website. You'll Just get go your on your shirt. order one. You put a credit get, card Get that credit card out. One. Take those mothballs <laughs> off that credit card. Can I get one? Yeah, absolutely. Episode800.com. I'll pull it up on your phone well, right now. You can I order one. have some privilege. One's gold, one's blue. Yeah, save it, buddy. You're just like all these other kids entitled. For privilege. Hoppy, Brad, and Drew, we're out. Three guys before the game. See you. <laughs> <laughs>